You can be seated. Amen. And thank you, Diana and Dallas and Julie and our choir and all of our folks who are serving today. Thank you for what you do. And it's good to be in God's house and it's good to have the family of faith together and what God's called us to do each and every time we come together. That's to worship and praise him, to study his word and also be equipped to do one more thing, to leave this place and go out into this world and to share the goodness of what Christ has done for each one of us. So as we've come together today, it's uh, good to be able to look into the Word of God and allow God to speak to us and prepare us for whatever comes our way. Because just as we've discovered this morning, we don't know what's next uh, today, tomorrow, next week. We just know God is going to be faithful. Amen? Amen. Amen. This morning, we're going to continue our study in the Gospel of Mark as Jesus is in the interruptions uh, of life all the time, and he lives in and for those interruptions that come, and he teaches, and he is teaching his disciples and those who would listen around him about the need to sow the seeds of the Gospel, and we've just called this Consider the Sower because that's what Jesus called it as he was teaching. The Bible tells us that Jesus pushed out from uh, the crowds in a boat on the side of the lake, and there he began teaching. And as he taught them, he taught them in a very familiar style for this day and time in this culture called the parable. The parable is uh, a, a way of teaching a story with a spiritual meaning, and it's always all about the kingdom of God. And so when Jesus teaches the parables that we call them, whether in any gospel that we read them from, he's always teaching about the kingdom. And what can we understand and learn and, 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 and grasp about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven that the Lord has prepared for us? And so we read it this morning with those things in mind. And we're looking at the scripture together in Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 20. And we're going to read verse number 20 together in unison. So Mark 4, verse number 20, will say in unison, you see it up on the screens behind me, it's printed on the sermon notes inside your worship bulletin. You can follow along that way or in your own copy of God's Word. Let me invite you, if you're able, let's stand this morning, let's respect the Word of God, and let's read together in unison this one verse, Mark chapter 4, verse number 20. Let's say it. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Now let's pray. Father, you have given us today an opportunity to be together as your family. And you've given us the joy of singing praise. The joy of fellowship. The joy of studying your word before we came into worship. And the joy now of reading your word together in the power of it. Lord, we know that you have a message for each one of us. Tailor made individually for all of our hearts and minds. So as we hear the word today, let us in the very uh, words of Jesus be uh, those who have ears to hear. Jesus said, let those who have ears to hear, hear this message today. Father, may you be high and lifted up in all of it. We pray these things in the perfect and precious name of our Savior, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first thing Jesus says to all of those on the hillside listening to him as he's teaching from the boat he uses an emphatic term and he says listen he says pay attention I I sometimes to write that if I'm uh, on this conference call or uh, zoom meeting and over the last several years uh, I I had to as a corporate chaplain uh, lead companies in different kinds of meetings and so many times I'd put a note like this 
up on the side of my computer screen. Pay attention. Or sometimes it would simply say, be quiet, because I have a tendency to talk over everybody else. And so you have to remind yourself, listen, pay attention, uh, be quiet sometimes. Understand your fo- where your focus needs to be. Jesus is saying to this group of people emphatically, listen to me, pay attention to me, open your mind and your heart to me now. Now, what did Jesus know? He knew that some of the people in the crowd wouldn't understand a word he was talking about. And because they came with the wrong motives. You have to ask yourself the question this morning, what motive did you come into the church house with today? Did you come with an open heart and an open mind and a spirit that's open to consider what the word of God has to say? Are you here with ears to hear the message? Meaning your focus is, I want to hear what God would say to me. Not what a preacher says to you, what is God going to say to you? And so, as we read through this scripture today and try to understand, in verse number 3, that's when Jesus said, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. Now, a sower, for some of you folks, means a farmer. Okay? I was not a farmer but my daddy was intent on me learning how to farm, okay? So, he grew up on the farm. He was the only child. He was the guy that what he loved to talk about was plow the mule, you know, had a mule. I can't remember what he said his name was, Joe or something like that. And Joe the mule and daddy were really good friends because he was the only child and he was plowing the field with the mule. And he did that all the time. And he loved to tell me the story about plowing with a mule. And every time he told the story, he got a little bit younger. I think he was about four years old last time I heard that story. So anyway, he would plow the field. And then, of course, you had to plant after you plow. Now, one of the things he was intent on, there are two boys in my family, myself and my younger brother. So guess what our mission was in the summertime? We were students slash farmers because we had the responsibility as daddy went off to work to take care of the garden that he had prepared but he taught us some valuable lessons he taught us how to plant seeds he taught us how to plant the seeds for the certain crops that we were going to to grow whether it was corn or squash or green beans or whatever it was there are certain ways that you plant the seeds so that they'll come up and produce a crop, a harvest, at the end of the season. So, (coughs) if you've never learned how to do that, that's okay. But I want you to understand that in Jesus' day and time, farming was a normal part of living because they didn't have a grocery store. And they didn't have all the modern conveniences that we have. Some people ask, well, uh, where do you get your vegetables? And they say, well, the grocery store. Well, they didn't just start there. They had to be grown someplace. And so as we think about and consider the sower, Jesus is telling this story with a great spiritual meaning about the kingdom. He says, pay attention. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some of the seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up and scorched it, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among the thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground. And yielded a crop that sprang up and increased and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, some a hundred. And he said to them, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, the greatest thing that we can ever do is listen to our master Jesus teach us. Not a preacher teach you, but listen to Jesus teach you. We just finished our new members class after uh, four weeks this morning. And what, that was one of the things we talked about this morning is... When we come together, we're here to hear Jesus teach us. 
and he teaches us from his word, the Bible. And so as we read about how he is teaching uh, all of those uh, disciples who are listening and those folks with all kinds of motives out on the hillside, we recognize something as he tells us to stay awake and tells us to pay attention. He wants us to hear this major message that if we're open hearted and our spirit is open to hear what God's got to say, guess what? We're going to hear a message. And we're going to have seeds planted into our life. And those seeds are going to begin to grow. And those seeds are the seeds of the gospel. He's not just telling a story about a farmer going out and spreading seed. He's telling a story about how each one of us, under the guidance and direction of the sower, Jesus, goes out and we sow the seeds of the gospel in the world. And we allow uh, Christ to teach us, help us, nurture those seeds and care for those people and recognize that there are some who are going to be hard-hearted. Some who are going to allow the cares and the wonders and the things of the world to, uh, to keep them from experiencing the fullness of God. And some who are just never going to have a chance because they just let it be caught away right from the very start. Our goal is is that we're the, be the, uh, the people to begin with who listen to our master teach and we learn what does it mean to be open-hearted to the, the Messiah and what he wants to tell us about the good news of Christ. He wants to show us some things that will help us uh, walk in the future and be those faithful people he's called us to be. Hebrews 2 verse number 1 says, Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it. So now, take for example, maybe all of us in this room are born again believers and we're Christians and we have the gospel seed planted deep within us and it's taken root and we're growing in the faith. The key is for us, are we continuing to pay close attention to what God is telling us because we have a mission. I've been telling you that for four months. We have a mission. And our mission is to share the truth and testimony of Christ with our world. If you want to see revival in the land, if you want to see spiritual awakening in your family, then you'll be willing to share your story with somebody else. You'll be willing to say, I have the seed of the gospel in my heart and I want to share it with you. But we first have to pay close attention to it, close attention to God's word, be taught and prepared to do it so that we won't drift away from what we've heard and what we've seen. It's very easy to be a believer in this world, to get caught away by the things of the world. And even though we're a sincere believer in Christ and we know we're going to heaven when we die, you can get distracted, can't you? That little thing you carry around in your purse or your pocket all the time. We call it a cell phone. It distracts everybody's attention from everything. We need to be really careful that we don't let the cares of the world and the distractions that we carry around with us all the time to keep us from not only hearing the message of Christ, but putting it into practice. We don't want to drift away. We want to be the church on mission for Jesus. Amen? So to do that, we need to listen carefully and pay attention to our master as he teaches us. Second thing I want you to see is that as we consider the sower this morning we want to sow the seeds of the gospel the church is not called to just sow good deeds do you hear me church is not called to sow good deeds the church is called to sow the seeds of the gospel the good news of Christ Jesus now we can do it in all kinds of different methods but we need to do it freely and we need to do it, as the Bible says, as Jesus says, abundantly. If you want to reap abundantly, what do you have to do? Sow abundantly, meaning you have to sow the seeds of the gospel abundantly in everything that you do. You are spreading them everywhere. And why would you want to do that and not skimp on the seed? I'm going to tell you why. Revelation 20, verse 12, reminds us why. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works 
by the things which were written in the books. You know what that's from? That's the great white throne judgment in Revelation chapter 20. You know what that judgment is for? Unbelievers. And there will be billions of them standing before Christ. And before they are cast into outer darkness and before they are separated from God forever, you know what they're going to have to do? They're going to have to bow their knee to Christ Jesus because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, do you really want to see your family members stand at the great white throne judgment? Absolutely not. Do you want to see your friends and people you go to school with stand at the great white throne judgment one day and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and then be separated from God forever? You see, sowing the seeds of gospel is not just something that is a command of the Lord Jesus and his great commission for our lives. Brothers and sisters, it's what we want to do for our family. It's what we want to do for our friends. It's what we want to do for our co-workers. It's what we want to do for people that we're acquainted with. We don't want anybody to stand at the great white throne of Christ and be separated from him. We want them all to come under repentance and be a part of the family of God. Amen? Amen. If we don't want that, we have no business being in God's church. So that's our mission. That's our goal. That's our calling to sow the seeds of the gospel and how are we supposed to sow them? Abundantly. I'm going to show you something that uh, many of you use on your yard. You've got these little green or whatever color spreaders they are and you're going to put seeds in it sometimes and you're going to uh, uh, overseed your lawn with that. You know the, how that little gadget works. Got that little wheel on the bottom and as you're pushing it, that little wheel spins and man, the seed or the fertilizer just goes everywhere. That's who we want to be as the church of Jesus Christ. We want to spread the seed as far as we can spread it. Now, are we responsible for where the seed lands? No. We're responsible to sow the seed. You know, we're responsible to sow the seed, and guess what? The Spirit is responsible for saving people. You sow the seed, the Spirit saves people. So we need to abundantly broad, we call that broadcasting seed and fertilizer. We're going to broadcast it everywhere that we can spread the, the seed in the world. That's our calling is to spread the seeds of the gospel. Third thing I want you to see. When we consider the sower, we have to understand the soil of the world. The soil of the world. What is the soil of the world? Well, you know, some of the soil, as Jesus, Jesus pointed out for us, the soils that are in the world, these are the soils that are in and among people's hearts and minds. That first, he, the, he, he, he talks to us about it. He says, that first uh, soil, I mean, the seed fell by the wayside, by the path, by the stony path there. And what happened? Well, the birds came immediately and ate the seed up. You've seen that, haven't you? I can't spread any seed without all the birds coming to eat mine up. So you spread the seed and the birds recognize immediately and they come and eat it up. Now, that lets us know, you know, Satan's going to let us hear the good news of the gospel. Satan will let people hear it, but oftentimes he's, he's sending everything that's possible to come and take away the seed. Not let them get into our hearts, into our minds, into our spirits. Now, the second kind of soil is that soil that was uh, uh, sown on the rocky uh, path or next to the rocky path. It's not too, the dirt's not too deep. And what happens? The seed gets in there and it starts to sprout, starts to grow a little bit, but it doesn't have enough dirt to get the roots deep down enough in order to survive and stay there. And the sun comes out and burns it up. People will hear the gospel, and, uh, and on first glance of it, they say, oh man, I love that. I love this story about Jesus. And then they'll just go on their way because there won't be any root that really goes down deep in their heart. They may not have 
somebody to disciple them, someone to lead them along, someone to talk to them about the scripture. You, you may have some people like that around you. You may have some people that, man, they've heard about Jesus, and they've heard about the church, and they've heard about things, but they don't have any roots in their spirit. God may be bringing you alongside them to help them grow some roots so that they can go deeper, deeper into the soil and take root. There's another soil. It's the soil that, yeah, the roots start going down deep, and yet they may even have the outward appearance of being a Christian. You may come to church every week. You may come to Bible study, to Sunday school every week. You may be involved in a women's or men's group Bible study. But the thorns come and grow up all around. The weeds come in. You know, that was part of my brother's and my responsibility, man. Daddy said, weed the garden. Oh, I hated that. Right? Does anybody like weeding the garden? No. But, you know, we'd go out and we'd weed the garden. We'd be pulling weeds up, trying to get them out of the way because what do we know? Dad's going to get home from work. He's going to walk in the garden. And if he sees there are weeds in the garden, he said, what have you boys been doing all day? I've been on the back 40 playing, Daddy. That's what we've been doing. That's, and, and so... We, we had that responsibility. Well, you know, the cares of the world. When Jesus was defining and talking about these soils, he said some things about them as he explains them on in the scripture. He said, do you not understand this parable? And he, he goes on and says in verse 15, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word. Likewise, the ones sown on stony ground also, when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. They, they like it. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now, those are the, those are the ones that, uh, uh, man, they, they, they like it, but they stumble, by the, they stumble because uh, they don't have deep enough roots. Now, these are the ones sown among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. And what? The cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Let me tell you something. An unfruitful Christian is uh, not supposed to be a part of the church. A Christian is supposed to bear what? Fruit. We bear fruit in the spirit, but we bear fruit also as we share our story and the testimony of God's grace in our lives, fruit are born. There, and, and that fruit comes and that harvest comes when we care for people and pray over people and walk with people and help people that even when they've got the thorns growing up around them, the weeds coming up around them. We as God's people, we're coming alongside them and we're helping them weed their spiritual garden because we want them what? To go to heaven. We want them to be a part of the church. We want them to be fruitful. And then, of course, the last soil that, that we read about in verse number 20, that's the soil sown on good ground. They hear the word. They accept it. They bear fruit. And then, do you know these people, they understood when somebody said, well, they're going to reap a harvest that's 30-fold or 60-fold or 100-fold because they knew about that. Some years, they would have an abundant harvest. Some years, they'd have a smaller harvest. But what do we know? They always had a harvest. Why? Because they always sowed the seed. The more you sow the seed, the more the harvest comes. We are called to understand the soil of the world and be those people who rejoice in our opportunity to tend the garden, to care for people, to love people so they can uh, find the, the joy of the gospel that we know. I, I have a joy of my salvation, don't you? Y'all still with me? You got a joy in your salvation? Amen? 
All right, so the joy of your salvation. Sometimes it gets dented a little bit by the world. Every so often something just flies all over me and I get angry or upset or whatever and I have to come back to the center again. I have to come back to the focus. What really matters here? You have to ask yourself that question. What really matters? What really matters is walking with Christ every day. What really matters is that we have an eternal place prepared for us. What really matters is we have family members that we want to go with us. What really matters is we have friends and co-workers and people that go to school with us and people that we truly care about, that we're praying over, that we're loving, and we're trying to influence for the goodness and the grace and the gospel of Christ. And in doing that, we recognize what's going on with their life as Jesus is talking about here as the sower recognizes all the the soils the seed is going to be sown in but we don't give up we recognize that reaping a harvest is so important we need to do it before it's too late amen let's do it before it's too late we want to reap an abundant harvest now understand it's not about us is it it's about Christ in us We're called to sow, and the Spirit is called to save. So we're going to sow the seed, and we're going to sow it abundantly. And so the very last point on your outline, reap God's harvest before it's too late. Reaping an abundant harvest with joy, with thanksgiving, and realizing that we never underestimate how God can bring the harvest. Never underestimate that. We're living, as I've said, in the last days before Christ returns for his church. I am not going to underestimate the power of God to deliver millions of people into his kingdom before he comes to get us. Amen? I'm not going to underestimate the power of God. I've seen him forgive a sinner like me. I've seen him forgive people that had turned their back and run so far away from God, you would think there was no way back. But God forgives and he loves and he receives. Has he forgiven you? Do you have the grace of God this morning? Where is your heart? What soil is it? Is it among the thorns? Is it on the rocky path? Have you got any root in your spirit at all? If you don't, God's here to show you He wants his gospel to grow in your heart and your life. He wants you to understand the joy of salvation that so many people in this room already enjoy and understand. The Apostle Paul said some great things, obviously, all through the Scripture, but in Galatians chapter 5, or chapter 6, verses 7 uh, through 10, I want you to hear these words uh, from the Apostle Paul. Galatians chapter 6 beginning at verse number 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Now he is talking about those of us who are believers and what we sow in the world is what we're going to reap in the blessings of God and in the fruit of the Spirit. But he is also pointing out to us that our responsibility is going to be to sow abundantly so that others can come to know Christ as well. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. That is bad stuff. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Verse 10 completes the thought, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Paul is trying to help the Galatian churches understand that God, in all of his mercy and grace, wants us to experience an abundant and blessed, fruit-filled life. But he wants us to demonstrate that fruit among people in the world so that they will grow and have the seeds planted in them as well. This morning, 
you may be sitting back and saying, I don't know if the seeds of the gospel have grown in my heart. Well, I want you to know they can. All those soils represent all of our human hearts. And sometimes we have inhospitable hearts. Sometimes we say, oh God, I I just want to do it on my own. I just want to be my own person. Well, God's going to let you do that, but if you live your life in rebellion against the Spirit of God, the only thing that's going to happen is one day you're going to stand at that great white throne and you're going to say, why didn't I choose the other? Why didn't I choose to follow Christ? So I want to encourage you today, if you're that one who you feel like your heart's been a little hard at times, Will you let the Spirit soften you up today so that the seed of the gospel can really come into your life? Because the seed of the gospel is really simple. God loves you. And he loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus in the world to die for you. And he died for you so that you wouldn't have to reap the penalty and the harvest of your sin. Because what you sow to the flesh Reap what? Corruption. That means death and separation from God. But if you sow to the Spirit, if you come before the Lord and you say, God, I want, I desperately need your peace. I need your love. I need your grace. Then you know what God's going to do? He's going to welcome you just like this. His arms are going to be wide and he's going to welcome you into his family and he's going to say, I have loved you before the foundation of the world and I want so desperately for you to be a part of my family. And that's what God is saying to all of us. If you've never made that choice to truly follow Jesus, think about it today. God loves you that much. He sent his son for you and then He gives you this opportunity to say yes to him. I'll follow you, Lord. I'll accept what you've done. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can have that today. But you just have to be willing to say yes to God. Let the seeds of the gospel, the good news of grace, come into your heart right now and receive it. Church folks, many of us have been in God's church for decades and decades and decades, our entire life. But you know, you were created for this season right now. You were created, as uh, Esther was told by uh, her uh, uh, uncle, for such a time as this. And as we've been created for such a time as this, We are called, called and need to be committed to sowing the seeds of the gospel abundantly in the world. Amen? That's his calling to us. What's God's calling for you today? Let's not grow weary in well-doing, but for in a due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Uh, In one of the translations it says you'll reap a harvest if you don't lose heart. We're going to reap the harvest of God, not because we did it, because we're going to sow the seed and the Spirit's going to save people. But God's Spirit wants to save you this morning if you've never said yes to Him. Will you do that right now? Will you say yes to Christ in your life? Father God, we thank you this morning that you are always, as we've already said, faithful. You love us with a love we can't even understand and you've sacrificed everything for us by giving your son Jesus right now I pray for us as a church that you'll help us Father God take on our role of sowing the seeds of the gospel and sowing them abundantly Father I pray now for those in this room who have never said yes to the gospel that right now today in this next moment 
they could turn their hearts and faces to you and say, Lord, I know that you sent Jesus for me and he died for me, a sinner, and I need to be forgiven of my sin and come into your family. And Father, I pray as they recognize that right now in this moment, that they would turn their hearts to you and simply pray a prayer that says, Father God, I love you, and I know, Lord, you love me. Thank you for sending Jesus for me. Father, forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross, and I confess Jesus is Lord. And I also believe that, Father, you raised him from the dead for me. Thank you, Lord, that you would save me right now and put me on a path to walk with you. Thank you, Jesus, for being the lover of my soul. If you prayed a prayer like that or you want to pray a prayer like that before God, I want to encourage you this morning as we finish this prayer time and have this moment of commitment that you'll come to him and you'll say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And we invite you to this altar today. Brother Jake and I are going to be standing here to receive you. And we want to pray with you if you're not sure about your relationship.